All right. Hey, Joyful Journey, you're Anita Adams here, your host. And today I'm so thrilled to introduce you to Jennifer Regular, who is known as the Soul Illuminator. Jennifer uses her incredible sense of intuition and insight to guide purpose driven entrepreneurs to focus on the difference they want to make in alignment with their soul calling while effectively managing their time and energy to prevent overwhelm. She is an international speaker, author of Embrace Your Power, A Healing Journey of Self-Discovery, and host of the Awaken and Ascend podcast. Today, Jennifer is going to share her wisdom on an important topic, finding the courage to change. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's such a joy and a pleasure, Anita. Thank you. I'm really honored to be here. Yeah, I, I feel like um, we've got so many things in common. I, I just love connecting with like-minded souls. And I love your title, The Soul Illuminator. I, I wish I had thought of that title. It's so perfect. And it, you know, it brilliantly captures what you do, helping people connect with that soul calling. It's, it's perfect. So again, I'm jealous that uh, you've got that title and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely feel like we're part of the same soul group. And, you know, since using that title, which was actually given to me from other podcasts that I've been on, and it just made sense, especially with my business being Lighting the Path, I'm like, yeah, that really fits. So I think I'm going to keep using that because mm -hmm. I'm not really certified as a coach or a counselor, all of the things that I've done in the past. Soul Illuminator really captures what I do. And since then, I've met a soul whisperer. I've met a soul connector. So <laughs> I love yeah. that more and more we're collecting with our soul cluster, our soul group. I really feel yeah. like we've been working these individual missions for quite a while now. And now we're coming together on the collective mission to really wake up and change the world and help people more and more realign with their soul calling, recognizing that yeah. there's something more. Wow, that really speaks to my soul. I love that. And and I find it so exciting that there does feel like there are more and more people that are rising up that I feel like it's that vibrational energy that's happening and that the veil is lifting. More people are seeing and recognizing the power that is within themselves when they tune in and listen to their their soul calling or what I like to call whispers of the soul. So you mm -hmm. said soul whispers. That's a, I might have to hold on to that title. The title of my book actually <laughs> that's coming out soon is called Whispers of the Soul. So oh, I love it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, let's, um, we're here to talk about finding the courage to change. This is a topic I know you were very fond about talking about. So to me, that suggests that you have a personal story where you had to find the courage to change yourself. Am I correct with that assumption? Yes, I've had so many different changes and pivots in my life and just really learned to embrace that and recognize that nothing actually lasts forever, you know, forever, just, just as long as it lasts, you know, and having the courage to change because we all, it seems like we want things to be different and yet we fear it at the same time because there's this uncertainty, there's a sense of instability that also goes along with that and that shakes our foundation, right? Our mm -hmm. core of safety and security. And so having the courage makes us more empowered to really embrace those pivots of change. Yeah. And yeah, where did it all start? Well, <laughs> so many different pivot points, but I'll tell you probably the one that took the most courage was leaving my really dysfunctional, abusive marriage. Mm. It uh, got a little scary and there were threats on my life and there were threats on my ex-husband wanting to burn down the house. It was actually a whole hostage situation <laughs> that was happening um, to get him out because of the threats he was making. And I left anyway. I had the courage not knowing where I was going to go. And you know what? I was actually working at a women's shelter at the time. And so there was some shame that went along with that. Like, you know, mm -hmm. how does this appear to the people I work with or my coworkers? And how does this uh, 
what does this mean for me? You know, <laughs> like, and then where was I going to go? Because it was a conflict of interest to be able to go to a shelter. So when I decided to leave, I took the one thing that was most important to me, knowing that I may never be able to come back. And it was a picture of my dad and mm. I, when I was a baby and I was always daddy's little girl, but in this picture, he had me in a diaper box and he was using it as a car and, uh, you know, moving me around in the apartment. And I realized so many years later that what that represented for me, why was it that picture? The one thing that I took, I had so many things that were meaningful. I, with all the little different losses that I've experienced in my life, I kind of just fine tuned to only doing and surrounding myself with what was aligned with my values, what was most important. So there was lots of things to choose from, but I recognized that picture was a sense of safety and security. Mm -hmm. That's what my dad represented to me who has passed many couple decades ago. And uh, I felt like with that, that I would have the courage to make the mm -hmm. change, you know, but I didn't recognize that at the time I just grabbed onto that and, right. and left. And then I, I drove to the end of the road. I just knew I had to leave. I had no idea where I was going to go. And I got to the stop sign and I looked left and I looked right and there was nothing ahead. So I had to turn one way or the other. And I, I really didn't know what direction. So I said, spirit, <laughs> guide me in the direction I need to go. So I turned right and I ended up at a friend's house and that led to some other transitions. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I found my way. And, you know, that was the most salient experience. But every time I had to pivot, whether it was a different place of living, a different job that I had, always trying to find the right alignment with what I truly valued, I recognized that the one phrase of, universe, God, your higher power, higher self, even your soul, find me where I need to be doing what I need to be doing. And I always, always landed there. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that very personal story and a heartfelt story. I can imagine it wasn't easy at all to walk away from the relationship, even though it's abusive. You know, the, the stories we tell ourselves when we're in those situations and the reasons we stay, you know, to can be more damaging to us, but we don't we don't see it, you know, in, in the in the time, in the moment. And I know it takes tremendous amount of courage to to walk away from from that. You you commented on. Um, the stories uh, that were going on in your head that you worked with um, the, the woman's shelter and that there was uh, this this internal thing going on. And I know part of what you teach people is um, letting go of the roles that you that define you. And maybe that's a good lead into explore that a little bit more to give some more presence to the importance of of that and what that really means and what the process was for you and how you coach people to uh, let go of those roles. Yeah, it's interesting how we identify ourselves. And when things don't quite go or we don't feel like we're living to our own or others expectations, in those roles and we kind of go through this identity crisis where we become uncertain about the future, we don't really know who we are, what we're doing, and it again destabilizes us. And so using that same example, being a wife, you know, or if you're a parent as well, in my case, thankfully I wasn't. <laughs> and so but there was this issue of the wife and the idea of marriage lasting forever and having to break your vows and you know, what all of that means. And so the process is, it wasn't so much just even about the marriage, it was the ideas, the dream, and right. the loss really coming through the shattered dream, mm. you know, of everything that you thought believed in and expected, didn't come through. And that really shatters your sense of trust in other people, in circumstances, in your higher power, and also in your own ability to trust yourself and the decisions that you make are the right decisions. 
you know, and one of the reasons why I got a, or switched jobs many times within social and human services, you know, I mentioned about working at the shelter, but I worked in many other places as well, uh, different roles of counselor or coordinator, working with people that were facing multiple barriers across many different populations. And each time it was to get out of that role to role way of thinking and wanting to connect soul to soul. Hmm. And so part of that process is really getting in touch with what you value, what you know is true, because when you put what you know is true in front of you, you'll never get lost because then it starts to act as your compass and it helps direct you towards what your soul is calling you towards, what you feel purpose and meaning and drive in, Mm -hmm. you know, and so no matter what it is, whether it's a marriage or a job or another kind of relationship, or even a struggle that you have with yourself or society or the world at large, is coming back to living in alignment with your values, coming back to remembering what those are and being Mm -hmm. okay if they've shifted a little, you know, not being attached or stuck in those roles. I was really well known as a counselor in those different fields and was even called like a mental health guru at one point. And, you know, there's these roles and expectations, identities that people also place on you. And you don't, for me, I didn't want to disappoint anyone either by changing things up, you know. But I started to move from a place of inner knowing rather than extenuating external circumstances and conditions. And from that inner knowing, creating stronger foundational conditions that supported the way I truly wanted to live, that really supported me in helping me thrive rather than just going to the day-to-day job and just surviving in these systems that aren't systems that weren't working. They're very restrictive. They're very constrictive. You know, one of my intentions for going into that was getting anyone lost in the system out. And that's really been my mission, no matter what kind of role I was taking on through my 16 different jobs, you know, in that field and others, and also, you know, about five or so business ventures really understood that my mission was to guide the destiny of souls into their most empowered way of being. Hmm. And that really started when I was 10 years old, actually, Anita, so young, (laughs) the way I was seeing the world was very different from how I wanted it to be, you know, that the conscious connection, the reverence for life, the joy and the wonder and the innocence that comes from childhood, but I still carry several decades now later. But I kept all those observations to myself and I was just writing them down, writing them down. And it was a book that came together in my mind (laughs) that I conceptualized called When Society Determines Your Destiny. Mm. And I really, over those few decades in between, I've actually... So publishing the book that you mentioned in the introduction about embracing your power was the real message there, but it really became a healing journey and a journal is what the book is of self-discovery, reestablishing, reconnecting our relationship with ourself and recognizing how society authorities and others, and even our own expectations and beliefs that were adopted from others and the generational trauma can come into play and dispirit us. And so when we heal our relationship with ourselves, we also recognize that we hear this all the time, that we are spiritual beings having this human experience. But do we really get that we're spiritual beings first? Because Mm -hmm. if we did, we'd recognize that spiritual wellness and keeping our spirit intact needs to be top priority Mm -hmm. because that is who we are. And then to embrace change as part of the human experience, we all came here to have our agreements that, you know, there's going to be some things that challenge us, that shake our core and our identity and help us remember through that dismemberment who we truly are Mm. and what we're here to shine light on. So as the soul illuminator, (laughs) I'm here to activate (laughs) that soul's calling, but I had to do it for myself first. So there was a lot of deep inner work that had to go on in being willing to go into those darker places. 
yeah. you know, and being with that heaviness and the grief over and over and over again. And I remember that there was a workshop I attended so many years ago, it's just coming to mind now, where it was about difficult emotions. And they had us in the beginning write down a difficult emotion. And you know what mine was, Anita? No, tell me. Not what you'd expect. I wrote down happiness. As a difficult emotion. As a mm. difficult emotion. And you know, I can actually feel emotion coming up for me as yeah. I say that, because I just yeah. recognize that every time I tried to move towards happiness or felt happy, mm. the world would crumble. It was like building sandcastles too close to the water. Mm. And they have this beautiful structure that you've built, that you've created, and the waves just come in and wash it away. And so it was really hard for me to be happy or even to connect with others because I had <laughs> so many losses along the way of family and friends and bankruptcy and the home and the pets and the husband and so many things that seemed so great and wonderful at the time. And I was happy mm. and yet it went away, <laughs> mm. you know? And so happiness was a difficult emotion for me because it felt like, if I felt that something bad was going to happen. How did you overcome that? Or is that still a work in progress for you? I'd say a little bit is still a work in progress for me. Uh, not so much about happiness, but really fully embodying a joyful and wonderful life is mm -hmm. still a little bit of a work in progress because uh, there's a lot of self-worth to recognize and still work through as well and sometimes as a spiritual entrepreneur <laughs> mm -hmm. right we're really purpose driven and so no matter what's going on we're always in service to others and sometimes that can act as a disservice towards ourselves. So I've engaged in a lot of soul care and soul care really is the new self-care because mm -hmm. <laughs> when I was working in uh, human and social services, you know, there'd be self-care things that we could take part in, different wellness programs. They went into ergonomics, people would go to the gym or meditate, but none of it was really sustainable. There was still a lot of stress and overwhelm, but 99% of my coworkers were on medication for depression mm -hmm. and anxiety or on workers' comp because we would injure ourselves or come up with some other dis-ease, right, and disorder. And so kind of lost my train of thought there where I was going with that. But recognizing that soul care yeah. is really where it's at because we move out of our comfort zone. Like really what self-care is, it, it tends to the deficiency needs and really feeds into what's not enough. We're not exercising mm -hmm. enough. We're not moving enough. We're not eating enough of the right foods. We're not sleeping enough. It's all based around deficiency needs and it keeps us stuck. Mm -hmm in the self-perpetuating cycle of survival yeah. and laying our foundation. When we engage in soul care, then we really move out of that into our growth needs. You know, what feeds our spirit? Where we, do we find our soul joy, which is such a wonderful intention for this podcast. You have all these amazing guests that are speaking on ways to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Giving us the inspiration, the tools and the strategies to support what does spark joy? What brings us joy? And what can help us sustain it? And when we keep feeding our soul, then we are less likely to experience that breakdown or that disillusion <laughs> of all the things that we've built up. And so engaging in those soul care practices has really supported me mm -hmm. and really helped me through those darker times. And I always come back to that. Actually, there is a four-step process that's kind of easy and quick to understand and I modify it depending on who I'm working with or who I'm speaking to for the audience for example but it's cope and you literally use this to cope with anything and that is C standing for conscious connection because again remembering that we're spiritual beings we need to come back to that because when we're not consciously connected to our higher self or your higher power then we become separate and we start forgetting and we start dismembering and <laughs> becoming dispirited, right? Literally. And that leads to all of the other issues and struggles that we have. Oh, it's only temporary. 
Mm. <laughs> I like that. Mm. Yeah, it's only temporary, recognizing that it's impermanent. I mean, all of those losses <laughs> were also blessings because they led to such amazing growth and experiences that were way beyond my expectation. So P is ponder the possibilities. Oh, I like that even more. <laughs> yes, ponder the possibilities. Yeah. And we have infinite possibilities. I mean, Mike Dooley really made his living around helping us to recognize that, right? And that we have infinite future potentialities. And it's just deciding which one we're going to go with. And that can be really difficult. But E is really embracing your power. And having that courage to dream a new dream. Mm. So it's not just courage to change. I mentioned about having that dream, you know, of the marriage mm. and the house and everything that went along with it. And then having to have the courage to dream a new dream and not get mm. so attached and to so that, what the ideal was. Right. That is no more. That's letting mm. go of the titles and the stories that and the rules that define you in the past. So. exactly that's really exactly. that's really cool um so this is a soul care practice is that what you would call this this um the cope acronym is that a soul care practice that's part or is of that it. a technique yeah. or when you're feeling like you need to shift something internally or maybe a little yeah, bit of that's more of a technique to shift something yeah. internally yeah and it can be seen as as a soul care practice now mm. soul could be seen as an acronym for sending out universal love oh and I so, <laughs> so following your heart, your soul's calling, following what you love to do, engaging in those things, those are acts of soul care. Those are acts of soul love, of yeah. self-love and yeah. self-compassion, giving yourself the time and energy and resources you need to essentially resource yourself, right? right to fill yourself up. So for example, when I love being out in nature, I love cooking, my morning routine is non-negotiable. <laughs> so I spend a couple of hours on that, tuning myself into cosmic intelligence and the energies mm -hmm. of the day, setting intentions and tones for the day around that. So I can live in alignment with the natural universal flow to the best of my ability at right. this time of life. <laughs> and you know, I do a bit of journaling and I do a bit of reflecting and just having some me time. I enjoy, you know, my morning beverage and just doing an activity that just settles me, that starts my day, doing some exercise. I like Qigong. And so doing the things that you love to do, you can even just start by making a list of that and also shifting from all the to do's into yeah. your to be list. Like alongside your to do list, do your to be list and then cross reference that to is how you want to be and feel and experience life showing up in those to-do activities mm -hmm. <laughs> that you're bringing it down? Or is it just, what is the meaning behind that? That's how you can start coming back into alignment with what your soul really needs. And yes, self-care practices are still important. You sleep and eating and all of those things, exercise. Mm -hmm. You still want to incorporate all that. I'm just saying also go beyond that. Right. Right. And move into growth and well-being and, and to let go of perfection. Right. And just choose growth over perfection. Absolutely. Because perfection only leads us into a cycle of perfection and procrastination. We keep putting things off and we keep denying our own needs. And if we're getting into this perfect place, like things have to be just so <laughs> before or so we mm -hmm. can do those things. And so recognizing that time is not an renewable resource unfortunately yeah and so how do we best want to use that time yeah you know so really taking the time to reflect is another soul yeah. care practices so there's many of them there's actually articles on my website in the inspired living blog that speak to that as well great that um we'll make sure we include that in uh, in the show notes and and i was actually just going to say i think the soul uh soul care practices will be very unique and different to for everyone. You're speaking my language. What your soul care is my soul care. Like I, that yeah. you, we're <laughs> soul sisters in that way for sure. Mm -hmm. And there are so many other ways that you can take care and nurture your soul. And it's really about you taking the time to figure that out for yourself. 
and listening, like doing that inner work. I want to, I want to touch back on a few things that you've said uh, in that beautiful share that you just gave. There's, you just packed it, <laughs> you packed so much <laughs> goodness in there. I love it. Uh, you talk about inner knowing and that uh, having to understand what is really important to you and who you are and your values. I um, I read an article some time ago now, and it, I, I, I don't know if it's still true, but I suspect that they're, the numbers are close. The, the article said that less than 3% of people in North America are clear about their core values. Instead, wow. they're, they're being driven by those society values. And I, I love that you had... Um, uh, wrote a book, um, When Society Determines Your Destiny. And that that totally is it, isn't it? Because you're not tuned into your own core values that you are directed and making decisions based on what maybe your parents or your partner or other authority figures in your life, your friends, whatever, whoever they may be. There, there's these influences, the media that are influencing our decisions. So until you get um, clear on your core values, to me, that sounds like that is actually the beginning, the first thing you need to do if you want to make any change. Because if you don't, yes. if you aren't clear on your core values, you you won't you won't make a, a choice a change that is aligned with who you really are. And you're more likely not to make a change at all because you're you're confused about what's important to you. So <laughs> my question, do you have any tips on how to get clear on your core values? Yes. So the book originally, when I was thinking of it in my mind, was When Society Determines Your Destiny. It's not what the book is actually called, though. 30 years later after that, I ended up calling it Embrace Your Power, A Healing Journal of Self-Discovery, because that's really the true message, because when you're allowing society to determine your destiny, whether you were conscious of that or not, then you're really stuck in a place of stress and powerlessness. So true. To become empowered and to experience ease and flow and grace, you have to embrace your own power to make your own choices and your own decisions. And now you're asking about living in alignment with our values and not only 3% actually know what their core values are. For me, it's about autonomy, integrity, and spirituality. I'd say those are probably my current top three choices. Mm -hmm. And so when I talk about that to-do list or the to-be list, then I make sure that I'm aligning with that. Or when I'm having a tough decision to face or there's some other chaos that's happening in my life or a challenge, then mm -hmm. I remind myself of that. How did I figure that out? I've done so many value exercises <laughs> uh, and some compass work that I, one of the tools that I take people through discovering that. But one way, one simple way that I'll share now is write a story about an experience where you felt fulfillment where mm -hmm. you felt deep life satisfaction, where you felt that soul joy, right? Everything you can about that. And then look it over and circle the key words, that, the power words that really stand out for you. You know, what made that meaningful? What made that exciting, joyful, happy? What made that that way? Was it spending time with family? Okay, so family, spending time with family is one of your core values, right? Doing meaningful work. Okay, meaningful work is one of your core values. Integrity, authenticity, honesty. Those are also other words I can use for about my core values. Those were the traits that people had that I wanted to surround myself around. Having autonomy and freedom, it's why none of those <laughs> roles that I held for, you know, over 20 years and all those other jobs when I was working with employers, making a big difference to the people I served, but still very restrictive. I didn't have autonomy. I didn't have the freedom. And so I became an entrepreneur because <laughs> that's really what my spirit, my spirit energy was moving me toward. And so that's one way you can get into your core values. But if you also really want to just connect with yourself and really embrace your power, then I suggest this to really step into 
your passion. Yeah. And the way I see passion is when you break up the word is past. Is there going to be another? Oh, there's another yes. acronym coming. This oh. is one you want to write down. <laughs> I do. I'm ready for you. Okay, Jennifer. Pass I on. Oh. Yes. Uh-huh. So when I got downloaded, we'll say, <laughs> channeled that information yeah. to be able to share with others, I first had to embody that for myself. I had to learn that I, that I was here to pass on. I is your soul's expression right. of what you're here to pass on in this yeah. lifetime. It's not the eye of ego that needs to conform to a certain identity or expectation because that just takes us in a fog. And yes, this is an acronym <laughs> for fear, obligation, and guilt. Mm -hmm. And we know fog is really dense. It's cloudy. It obscures our vision of reality, of our future. Early in our conversation, Anita, you talked about the veil is lifting. Actually, we're piercing the veil. Mm. We're piercing the veil. We're breaking through all those old paradigms, old ways of thinking, self-defeating limitations and patterns, and self-imposed limitations through not recognizing our values. You can also find out your values in the opposite way, like a contrast to clarity kind of exercise where you write something that's really causing anger and resentment and that you don't like. Write everything about that. And then find out what it's keeping you from. Why is that such a challenge or a problem for you? What need is that not meeting? And then you recognize what your value is. Hmm. Right? So for example, and I don't mean any judgment towards any smokers out there, you know, everyone's on their own path doing what they need to do. And maybe it brings you joy. I'm all for that. For me, I don't enjoy smoke around me, you know, cigarette smoke or otherwise. And so for me, I like, what's my value in that? Fresh air and beauty, clean air, you know? So just that's using that as an example of the contrast to clarity, right. something I don't like, or what that's keeping me from, or what that's holding me back from, experiencing freshness, fresh air, clean air, or mm -hmm. the flowers, you know, it's obscuring those scents that I want to be able to smell and experience, because that's part of my soul care. Right. You know? So surrounding yourself in those environments and people that are life supportive for you. Great. Yeah, some really great techniques there uh, to help identify your core values. I think that's uh, is very helpful. Thank you. Very cool. I want to I want to go back um, a little bit. You you spoke about stepping out of your your comfort zone and and mm -hmm. um, we know we we know that's where the growth zone is we know that you have to step out of your comfort zone to to grow but that's easier said than done so do you do you have any any tips or strategies that we can share that you can share that will help us take that step so we can be more courageous and make change to step out of our comfort and into that growth space yes choosing how you want to live your life so that's that's getting clear again on yeah. who you are and what you want yes. so having that that clear vision yeah so i choose to live my life with curiosity courage compassion okay so that I those are values again we're coming back values to values again yeah. exactly exactly huh. and I, have, I start my day, part of my morning practice is reading through my guiding principles, those reminders. It's kind of like an intention and affirmation put together yeah. that guide me in the life to keep me in alignment with my personal mission, to keep me in alignment with my values, because it's so easy <laughs> to get influenced and go off track, right? Mm -hmm. And so, yes, choosing how you want to be living your life and also not when we talk about having to move out of our comfort zone, think of it more as not having to move out of your comfort zone, <laughs> but actually moving into your growth zone because mm. it changes the energy and the focus because you're not caught up in having to let go or feel like you're losing something. It's the same thing, for example, for people who want to lose weight. When you stop focusing on 
losing weight because we don't want to lose anything. Psychologically, we're creating a block there and we try so many things and we just can't do it. And we really struggle with it. But for those who focus on what they gain, what their growth zone is. So why do you, the why being connected with the why, how you want to be living your life. Does that mean that if you lose this weight, you're going to have more energy. You're going to be more beautiful or handsome or attractive Mm -hmm. that you're going to be able to be able to pick up your grandchildren, that you're going to be able to take those tennis lessons you've always wanted to, or breathe better. What's the why, what is it giving you? That's how you're choosing to live your life. So if you can shift your focus away from what you're losing or having to give up to what your gains are, what your core value is or reason why, then let's do that. And I I shared those examples of getting to your core values rather than all the millions of lists that are out there. We're obsessed with lists (laughs) and they're really not that meaningful because it doesn't really make us feel we're stuck in our head and we're just, okay, what, what's what should I write? What should I circle? What should I write down? Right. Mm -hmm. But if you really connect with the experiences that you have, then you're also connecting to that feeling. And that's what's meaningful Mm because that helps you align with that energy that you want to align with again and again and again to really strengthen that and be Mm -hmm. in your passion. Yeah. I like what you're saying. Um, It's very, it's simple and doable like anybody can do that it's the it's the shifting the the choice of words that we're we're using our perspective so it's not about stepping out of your comfort zone it's not about getting discomfort it's about growth and focusing on on the growth i love that the words are really powerful i totally get the importance of shifting that perspective and how you can do that to to create the courage to find the courage to make change. Is there any is there anything else? Do you have any other little um, processes that you recommend to your clients? You know, we got the the core values. I think that's super important. That feels foundational. And then it's a shift in perspective and, and the language that we're using and how we are are perceiving ourselves moving forward it's also letting go of the the roles the titles that we you know again but that's so closely tied in with the 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 core values understanding our core values those are three big ones is there is there anything we're missing anything else that we should you know point (laughs) our harnessing and really stepping into your passion right what you're here to pass on that i that soul's Mm -hmm. expression of what you're here to pass on i mentioned losses earlier Every funeral that I got to attend in the memorials or celebrations Mm -hmm. of life, I got to hear what people remembered about that person. That's the I that they passed on in this lifetime. You know, the relationship, that energy Mm -hmm. that you share with others, that soul energy that's sending out universal love. And I have a motto and it's on my website about free your spirit to direct the life that you're meant to live. Mm. So guess what? That takes all the pressure off of you to have to figure it all out. All you need to do. Yeah. The motto is to free your spirit to direct the life you are meant to live. And how do you free your spirit? Coming into your heart, engaging in those soul practices. Mm -hmm. When you stop limiting yourself Mm -hmm. and expand into your growth zone your spirit has the freedom to direct the life that you're meant to live you'll notice what you're being pulled towards you'll notice what you're drawn to you'll start noticing the things you love and that spark joy for you Mm -hmm. because you're freeing your spirit that energy to direct the life that you're meant to live because you are here (laughs) to pass your eye on yeah I get that. And I, I'm going to bring it back to something you said um, earlier, the acronym for soul, hmm. sending out universal love. That's all and we're here to me, do. Yeah. To me, that's the answer is choosing to one, be the love in mm-hmm. everything you do. Yeah. And when you are in that place of love, loving yourself deeply, and that's that comes from that soul care 
that you do and choosing to act from a place of love. You are sending out universal love and you're tapping into a higher power, the power within as well, and finding the clarity of what your soul is calling for you to do, that passion to pass yourself on, pass I on. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and do you want one more acronym, Anita? I do. I'm, I'm totally <laughs> the acronym. <laughs> do you know what you get when you're in that place of love, that kind of love? Tell me, tell me. Love can be lots of vital energy. Ah, uh, it is. You revitalize your life. You revitalize mm. yourself, your life, your world, the way you perceive it. It's so much energy. It's so much love. And that expands and can really raise the vibration of the planet and uplift mm -hmm. humanity. Yeah. You know, and so how amazing is that? <laughs> it is really freaking amazing. And it all comes <laughs> down to self though, right? That's where we start. And that's yes. how we we can change the world by loving ourself. 100%. Creating that inner harmony helps yeah. us to co-create global harmony, which is really my world vision. Mine <laughs> too. To You're all such of, a yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is? Put a comment in. We'd love to meet you. <laughs> oh, how fun. How fun. Okay, yeah. I've got another question for you. Um, yeah. you, uh, you talk about... Um, how to have that if we want to create the most beautiful life for ourselves that we have to be open to the possibilities for your life so yes. can you just elaborate like i i get that kind of intellectually but just let's talk yeah. about that a little bit yes so how to open to the possibilities yeah. Yeah. in what your life what does that even mean open to the possibilities for your life yes is that <laughs> <laughs> to be open, <laughs> to yeah. be open, to be expansive, to start cultivating and creating spaciousness in your life so that you can act when inspiration hits okay. and create influence and impact. Whether that means, you know, you have a bigger vision of wanting to do that for others or to create influence and impact for your own life mm -hmm. in your own happiness or your family or your in your relationship, whatever it might be. And so if we're stuck in thought spinning in our thought energy and limitations and conditions that may be restricting then we're not open to the possibilities in our life mm -hmm. but remember that was p and we had those two steps before when we were talking about cope so let me go back to my thing, notes yes <laughs> right, you've got um oh conscious connection yes only temporary Yes. Ponder the possibilities and embrace your power. Yeah. So conscious connection comes first because if you're busy in your head trying to figure it all out and not in original thought, because really those thoughts are just repeating things that happened or projections into the future, you need to create conscious connection. How do you consciously choose your path forward? Are you consciously choosing to live in alignment with your values? Are you consciously connected with yourself and your power, your higher power, however that, whatever form that might take for you, angels, guides, high, um, some kind of God, universe, goddess, whatever it might be. Because then you start connecting and tuning into the bigger picture. You're raising your frequency which creates more openness. It just naturally yeah. occurs that way. And so you start aligning your brain, your mind, and into your heart. And you come into your heart mind because your heart carries so much intelligence. It has all the answers. It gives you faith. And I mentioned the last one was going to be the last acronym, but I'll, I'm going to give you another one. <laughs> this is a bonus acronym. <laughs> For faith, especially for those who don't, who do still feel like there's a, still a forgiveness process from being hurt by a higher power or God, not understanding, you know, why God would do certain things. Having faith is finding answers in the heart. Hmm. And then when you can open your heart, then you really do for your spirit to direct the life you're meant to live. Because you, again, 
Notice what makes your heart sing, what pulls on your heartstrings, what's meaningful for you, right? And so you start moving that way. We also need to like do some releasing and clearing and letting go. And that's recognizing that everything's only temporary. Letting go of those attachments because mm -hmm. it keeps us emotionally stuck. So we're giving ourselves freedom from those emotional attachments and recognizing that everything is only temporary, which is also a good thing because if we don't like how life is right now, it's going to change, right? But we can also consciously choose how we want life to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's how we can be open. And then the other thing is, is not figuring it all out. You can just simply ask yourself, and be sitting with the question, what else is possible? Mm -hmm. What else yeah. is possible? And yeah, one of my, to, yeah. To be able to receive that, something I share with my clients is that they have to listen without judgment. Yes. You know, not attach, you know, any any judgment to what your your heart, your soul is sharing with you, your higher calling, whatever is sharing. Yeah. And that, that can be hard. You know, it can be hard to, because you hear, when you really tune in and really listen to what your soul is directing you to do, it, it can be pointing you down, well, out of your comfort zone and to your growth zone, rather. Yes. Um, but it's, it can be scary, right? Yeah. And, uh, and, and I know I have been in a position where I've heard and strongly felt the direction that I'm supposed to go in. Well, doing this stuff, teaching people how to tap into inner wisdom. When mm -hmm. I first started getting to that download years ago, it was like, who am I to do that? You know, like that's not mine right. to do. And I pushed it away because it was very, felt big and, and scary, you know, and I had that the judgment piece on it. You know, what are people gonna think? You know, this former film executive is now this spiritual, you know, woo woo person. You know, like, right. so I yeah. had all that dialogue that was going on in my head. Yeah, but you had the courage also to dream the new dream. To Eventually, dream a new dream. It took a, it took a while. It to, does to take a while. Like we said, courage, it takes a lot exactly. of inner work. Exactly. A lot of that's exactly it. It took a lot yes. of inner work. But there was a willingness to do that yes. inner work. Yeah. A willingness. And then there's some of us that are purpose driven, you know, and it's that purpose that continues to drive us past the fear to be able to do it anyway, you know, and one thing that's scary for me, one of my core fears is not living my fullest potential. Hmm. And when I remember that, I'm like, I, I fear that more than anything. <laughs> so then that kind of helps me move forward. And also recognizing that if you didn't step into the path that you're in now, Anita, is that someone else will. Because this work needs to be done here on our earth. We need to be in service to humanity. Yeah. In some way, we all came here to do that. And we don't know when we don't know, <laughs> you know, whether we're good enough for that, for that mission, or that we're, we've forgotten, you know, that we have everything that we need to be able to support that mission. Then we open up. And one of my ways of doing that, like I said earlier, was to find me where I need to be doing what I need to be doing. That opened me up to the other possibilities for my life. And they did present themselves. And then it was up to me to take action on right. that inspired action. The doors are always going to keep opening for us. Yeah. But it's up to us whether we want to move through that or not, because we have free will. Yeah. Right. And so. I mean, it doesn't matter how like long this. it takes you either to to move through those doors you know like you're, everything no it doesn't matter right time. yeah absolutely absolutely everything is in divine timing and we just roll it over and we trust the process and again that trust comes into play right yeah. and so i have my hands open and up to the sky and i just lean back and i ask i open to the divine presence moving through me now in service to humanity. That's when I get stuck in ego, uh, another acronym, edging God out, <laughs> oh, <laughs> right? Yeah. When we become disconnected <laughs> yeah. and we lose that conscious connection, this is a way to reconnect with that. I open to the divine presence moving through me in service to humanity. So that gets me back into a place of service mm -hmm. and not being an active ego where that shame and that imposter syndrome and all of the things that having to identify with certain roles of the past come into play is all ego stuff. 
Yeah. It's all ego stuff. Yeah. I like to tell my clients that um, your higher self, your uh, voice of inner wisdom will always come from a place of love. Yes. And your ego or the inner critic will come from a place of fear. And that's how you can really decipher between the yes. two. So. Jennifer, this has been so wonderful. I feel I, like I found a, like I said earlier, I found a kindred spirit. I love the work you're doing. I love all your acronyms. Uh, I am, I will be sharing a lot of them. I'm actually going to be going into teaching a masterclass tonight. And I think I'm going to share some of this stuff. It's perfect. Awesome. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for your time, for your wisdom, for your vulnerability, for being so open and sharing your, your true heart. It comes, it comes through beautifully. Mm -hmm. And I'm honored to have had this, this time with you today and to, to just know you, have you in my life, because I, we're, you're staying in my life. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <gonna> stay connected. <laughs> we got to keep that uh, that that soul community growing, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, really yes. cool. Now, please tell us how can um, people find you if they want to um, tap into the services you offer. Yes, absolutely. You can check it all out on my website, lightingthepath.ca. You'll find everything there. I also really love doing the podcast because there's these transformational experts from literally around the world that share their wisdom to support you in becoming a fuller expression of who you are. So I recommend uh, going to the podcast as well, similar to this one where you get to help people awaken and ascend. So you'll find that on YouTube. And those are really the two places where you'll find everything else. My book is on the website as well if you wanted to check that out. You'll find me on LinkedIn and Instagram under <laughs> Lighting the Path. Yeah. <laughs> Good. And well, of course, yeah. we'll include your details in the, sh in the show notes so people can check you out. So that's awesome. Absolutely. Thank you yeah. again, Jennifer. What a pleasure to um, have this time with you today. And Joyful Journey, thank you so much for tuning in, for joining us. And we'll catch you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>